A very warm welcome to all my dear students. I'm Dr. Vijayalakshmi Naik, Assistant Professor, Department of English, P GFGC and PG Center, Dharwad. Today I'll be introducing you all to American literature. But before I begin, a quick tip. As students of English literature, we have to do a lot of vast reading. But for an exam like uh, UGC national eligibility test or uh, state eligibility test, when we have a stipulated amount of time, it is always best to study smart. Instead of reading too many books, uh, the best thing that you can do is understand the key concepts and then find some important writers for American literature, uh, which is the third module uh, in the net set exams. Collect material from um, various, you have various educational websites. So collect material from there and make your own notes. That will save a lot of time for you. For convenience, I have divided this video in two parts. The first part, I'll be introducing you to the key concepts in American literature. In the second, I will be talking to you about important writers. Students, let us begin with the first concept, Puritanism. Puritanism is a religious reformation movement which originated in the 16th century in England. The dissenters or people who didn't believe in the Church of England were exiled from England and they set sail from England in search of a new land. In 1620, the Mayflower, the ship named Mayflower set sail from Plymouth, England in search of the new land where they could be free to practice their beliefs. Later in 1630, John Winthrop along with 700 pilgrims also followed to the new land to establish a city on a hill. The Puritans are extremely orthodox and staunch in their religious views. Anybody who doesn't believe in what they believe they are doomed or will go to hell. This is their belief. Now, Puritanism believes in absolute sovereignty of God. That is, God is in total control at all times. Bible is like the supreme for them. Puritans also believe that all humanity is inherently evil. This is because of the sins of Adam and Eve. Puritanism also believes in predestination. That is, God knows all choices and outcomes before only. Uh, there are a select few who will achieve salvation because God chooses them. So these people are called the elect. Now the elect have no choice but to be saved. And the other half, the damned, they cannot choose election even if they want to. Even if they want to be good and follow God, they cannot choose. So we see that this is uh, exactly opposite to the Indian karma theory. Alright. So this is about Puritanism. Now let us move to the next concept. The next concept is transcendentalism. In the earlier slide, we saw that Puritans are extremely orthodox in their religious views. The transcendentalists are non-conformists. They are against organized religion. Religion is very subjective. It is one man's connection to his God. This is the belief of the transcendentalists. They do not accept things just because it is written in the Bible. So what is uh, the philosophy of transcendentalism? It is about the belief that the divine can be known only through emotion and intuition and not through reason. Transcendentalists championed individualism. Importance is given to the individual presence in society. Alcott Bronson says about Emerson that Emerson's church exists of one member, that is himself. Now this is the core philosophy of transcendentalism. We all know that Emerson is the torchbearer of transcendentalism. The soul's connection to God, this also is a very important concept in transcendentalism. Everything is connected to the soul. God is the oversoul and God's presence 
is there in all of us. We are all connected through this presence of God in all of us. Uh, this is something similar to the idea of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the Indian philosophy. Again, the role of nature, that also is an important concept in transcendentalism. Through nature, one can know himself or herself and by, by knowing yourself, uh, you can know God. This is an important concept in transcendentalism. Along with Ralph Waldo Emerson, we also have Henry David Thoreau, Walt Whitman, Emily Dickinson, who form a part of this transcendentalist group. Now, one more important question that is asked from transcendentalism is the magazine that is associated with this philosophy. That magazine is the Dial magazine. So please make a note of it, dear students. Now let us move to the next concept. The next concept is realism and naturalism. Both the terms are used interchangeably sometimes, but there is a difference between the two. Let's try to understand this. Realism. After Americans discovered the harshness of the civil war and life on the frontier, American authors attempted to represent ordinary everyday life instead of imagined and fanciful events that is nothing but realism the themes the like survival and violence were used to portray the harsh side of reality we have writers like stephen crane an episode of war the red badge of courage twain's adventures of tom sawyer and adventures of huckleberry finn we also have frederick douglas's narrative my Bondage and My Freedom, narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass. These are fine examples of realism. There is also Jack London's The Call of the Wind. Now, what is naturalism then? Naturalism is nothing but deeper, harsher realism. Naturalism doesn't mean nature just because it has nature in the world. Naturalists believe that there are laws that govern us as humans. Therefore, we can be studied and understood. Our family ties help create who we are and we are forces of our own environment. Naturalism attempts to apply scientific principles of objectivity and detachment to its study of human beings. Uh, and it doesn't believe in what is called as poetic justice. The concept man is alone and uh, there is no divine intervention is at the core of this philosophy. So you cannot expect to find happy endings for good people and bad endings for bad people. Now let's move on to the next slide. Harlem Renaissance. Harlem experienced cultural and intellectual explosion throughout the 1920s. Harlem is a neighborhood in New York City which became a destination for African Americans in 1920s as a part of the Great Migration. But its influence spread all across the world. It became an African American cultural center with poets, artists, writers, musicians and philosophers as a part of the Harlem movement. Music style, jazz, which was a part of the African Americans, it became a popular style of music even amongst the white audience. Afro-American literature of the era included themes of slavery and its effect on Afro-American culture. The clothing too changed with men wearing zoot suits. Now the image of the Afro-American which was hitherto thought of as substandard, the image of the uneducated laborer or the farmer. Now that image of the Afro-American began to change. A new image of sophisticated and intellectual Africo African Americans began to emerge. So we see in the 19s and uh, 1920s and 30s the blossoming of Afro-American culture. Herbert Harrison is called the father of Harlem radicalism. He founded the Liberty League, which is the first organization, and he also founded the Voice, which is the first newspaper of the Negro, New Negro Movement. Alan Locke's anthology, The New Negro, was considered the cornerstone of cultural revolution. Langston Hughes and his jazz poetry became very popular. The Weary Blues, 
uh, Madam and the Minister are some notable uh, jazz poems by Langston Hughes. Let's move to the next concept. This table of important periods of American literature is for our convenience. There really isn't a set timeline for American literature and it's definitely not universal. You can see that some of the concepts that I have discussed in this session are included in the timeline. The rest of the periods, I'll want you all to find more information and make your notes. You can go through the slides. Thank you for visiting my channel. I hope you'll have a good day. I'll see you in the second part of this session.